Hello and welcome to Embedded ARM Dev. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Linux ELF files. This is what we'll be discussing in this video. First, we'll talk about what an ELF file is, then we'll talk about the different types of ELF files, and then we'll go over the basic structure of the ELF file. So what is an ELF file? ELF stands for Executable and Linkable Format. It is a file format for binary files on Linux platforms. Most files in this format are the result of the compiling and linking process on a Linux system. All of the common commands we use on Linux are executable files that use this format. There are four types of ELF files, executable, relocatable, shared objects, and core dump files. The executable file is a standard executable binary. It contains all the information the OS needs to load the program into memory and execute it. All of the commands that we are familiar with on a Linux system are binary executables that are in this format. A shared object is a dynamic library that an executable can dynamically link into at runtime. The standard C library is a good example of this type of ELF. A relocatable file is a non-executable file that is designed to be relocated into an executable file or shared object. It contains code and data but is not executable because it doesn't contain all the information that Linux needs to load it into memory and execute it. Generally, executable binaries and shared objects are created by using many of these relocatable files. A core dump file is what gets generated by the Linux kernel when a process crashes. It contains the address space or memory dump, register values, and the call stack of an application at the point it crashed. Core dumps can also be generated on demand by a debugger such as GDB. Next, we'll take a look at the structure of an ELF file. This example graphic shows the layout of a simple Hello World program that was cross-compiled for ARM on Linux. The ELF is composed of a single file header in multiple sections, segments, section headers, and segment headers. We'll go into more detail about each of these later, but for now just make note of the basic structure of the ELF. The file header is always first and is at offset zero in the file. The file header is followed by the program headers, also sometimes called segment headers, these describe the segments in the file. After the program headers are the sections and the segments. In general, we can say that the sections describe the layout of the binary in its file form, and the segments describe the binary as it looks when it gets loaded into memory. The size of each section will vary, and the specific sections that are in an ELF will vary from file to file. Notice that the sections and the segments overlap. A segment is composed of multiple sections. In fact, segments themselves can overlap each other, as we'll see later. The section headers come at the end of the file after all of the sections. The section headers describe the layout of the sections. So now we have a basic understanding of the layout of an ELF. Let's look at each of these in more detail. So first, let's take a look at the file header. The file header always starts at the first byte of the file at offset 0. The file header provides basic information about the file and describes the layout of the file. For example, it contains the object file type, the machine architecture, and this would be the processor that is compiled for, such as x86 or ARM, the entry point or where the code execution starts. This is the address for where the actual code execution will start, uh, the location, size, and number of program segment headers, and the location, size, and number of section headers. Next, we'll talk about sections. The contents of the ELF file are organized into sections. Each section contains code, data, or file metadata of a specific type or use. The sections provide a file view of the program layout. The sections are contiguous in file memory, meaning they are back-to-back -back in file memory. And the size of each section will vary. So next, we'll talk about a few sections that are found in pretty much every executable file. The text section contains all the executable machine code that resulted from the compiling process. The RO data section contains read-only data. This is generally where hard-coded strings are located. The data section contains initialized variables. These are generally global variables that have some initial value. The BSS segment contains global variables that are uninitialized, which means the source code didn't assign them an initial value. This region will generally be set to all zeros when it gets loaded into memory. However, this is not guaranteed. Next, we'll talk about section headers. A section header is a structure that describes the location, size, and other properties of sections. The size of the section headers are fixed, as in they're all the same. 
However, the size of each section may vary. There is a section header for every section that exists in the file. All of the section headers are located together in a section header table, which is located at the end of the ELF file after all of the sections. Not all ELF files will have section headers. In fact, the loader does not need to have knowledge of the sections in order to load the program into memory and execute it. The loader in instead relies on segments for that. So next we'll talk about segments. Segments provide the in-memory process view of a loaded program. The program gets loaded into process memory by segment, not by section. The loader does need to have knowledge of the segments in order to load and execute the program, so all executable files will have segments. Segments can be matched to multiple sections, but the loader does not care about the individual sections in the segment, it only cares about the segment itself. Only the segments can get loaded into the process memory. If a section is not a part of a segment, it won't get loaded into the process memory. Not all object files will have segments. For example, relocatable files do not have any segments. Finally, we'll talk about program headers. A program header is a structure that describes a segment. It provides information such as file offset, load address, size and memory, and read-write execute permissions for each segment. They contain information needed by the loader to load each segment into process memory. There is one program header for each segment. The program headers are located near the beginning of the file after the file header. The size of the program header is fixed, but the size of segments will vary. So next we're going to do a quick practical exercise where I'll show you the elf.h file, which is a, a C header file that describes the structure of the elf. And then I'll show you a binary utility called readelf, which is a command that displays information about an elf file. And I'll teach you uh, four command switches, uh, A, which displays everything, H, which displays the file header, L, which displays the program headers, and then capital S, which displays the section headers. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is looking at the elf.h file. So there's two different ways you can look at it, or two different ways you can get it. And so the first one is we'll just go to um, web browser. Okay, and then you can just do a search for um, the elf file on the internet. So we'll just do a search for the manual and so just like any Linux command, like if you want to find the, the manual for like ls or cd, you can just type man, just like you can on the Linux command prompt. Um, and so in this case, we'll just to man elf. Okay, so that'll give us the man page for the elf. Now, I also recommend you throw in Linux in there. Otherwise, you might get some image results that you don't really want to see. So we go here and we'll look at this one. And, okay, so if you don't have access to a Linux system, then this is a good way to get a basic idea of what um, is inside the alpha. And so here it gives you, you know, a description, and then it talks about the basic types. Um, so these are all the different structures that are going to be used, you know, the, the, the types and the structures that will be used inside ELF. And... You can use these to parse the ELF file, or you can, you know, this is what readelf will use to parse the ELF file to know, like, what the sizes of the um, the data types are and the different fields and different structures and everything like that. So the first one here is we've got the ELF header, which this is the, actually the file header that I was talking about earlier in the video. Um, so you can see right here, this is the structure. This is, like, the actual structure of that file header right here. And we're going to go into more detail about this in a later video, so I just want to show the, the ELF file itself a little bit more. Um, so, anyway, you can just scroll down in here, and you've got different, you know, these are the, di these are the different fields inside the, um, inside the file header. You can see it's got, like, ident type machine version entry, and so then it comes down here, you know, and it's got type machine, etc. Okay. And so this, this gives the um, structure of program headers, which are, you know, the segment headers. And you can see that there's two different structs, 64-bit and 32-bit. And then you come down here. These are all the fields inside the segment header. And then you got the section header. Okay. And here's your um, section header structures. So this just gives you an idea of um, you know, how you can look at it and interpret it, which we'll be using this a lot later in future videos. Okay.
All right, the other way is you should have this on your system if you have a Linux system. Uh, you can, you'll have multiple versions of the ELF file. Unfortunately, there's multiple versions. And um, one way to find it is you can do um, the find command. And so you don't want to use sudo. Um, and then you do find. And then the root, you'll start at the root, right? At the top, that's where you're starting. And then use the name switch. And then we're looking for elf.h. I was going to pull up quite a few. Okay, I typed my password in. So pulls up a bunch of them. Um, so probably really this one here, or maybe this one here would be okay. Um, I would use this one here just because it's in the ARM. Uh, you know, it's in the ARM uh, cross compiler directory. I've got the cross compiler on here. Um, but really, you know, any of them are um, going to give you an idea of what's in it. But this one might be most useful because it uh, is in the uh, ARM directory. And so it'll, if we're cross compiling for ARM, this would have more information about uh, data specific to the ARM. So we'll just go ahead and take a look at this. And it's basically the same thing that we found on the internet. Uh, but it actually has a lot more information. Uh, so you can see here that it's type defing a lot of these different um, things that we'll use, like a 32-bit word, 64-bit word, um, addresses, right, offsets. Um, this is a section indexes. So, that, you know, this gives you um, a little more uh, detailed information about it than the elf, the man elf does. And then here again, you've got your, this is your program header. I'm sorry, excuse me, this is your file header. And that's the 32-bit one. And then here's your 64-bit one. Um, and so anyway, it goes through the same information. We're going to go through this in great detail in later videos. Uh, but you can see here that it's got a lot more information um, than what the online one did. Okay, so then here you've got the section headers. This is a section header uh, structure for 32-bit and then one for 64-bit. And so the main difference between these is that, you know, these words, the addresses and offsets are going to be larger in memory than 32-bit ones. And that's basically it for that. So now what I'm going to do is um, go to my projects folder and go to my hello world folder. And so what I've got here is... Um, so there's a lot of extraneous stuff in here, uh, but the one that we're going to look at right here is this hello arm binary that was compiled using the cross compiler. So if I run file on that, then that tells us that this is a 32-bit arm uh, thing. So if I try to run this, it's going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. So that's because it's compiled for a different architecture. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go over the various uses of the, a, a couple of uses of the read off command. So again, you can just do man read off. You can do this on the internet or you can do it on your Linux platform and it gives you um, the full, you know, help file for how to use. So you can see there's a lot of options in here um, and I'm going to go over a couple of them. And so A prints out everything. H prints out just the file header. L will print out the program headers, segment headers, and then the capital S prints out the, the sections. And there's a whole lot more stuff that you can print out with this, uh, but we're just going to look at those for now. So all you do is you do read elf and then the switch, and then you do the command, the uh, binary that you want to look at. And it's hello arm, sorry, hello arm. And so what this is going to do, let me make this full size is it prints out everything that read off all the output that read off can parse. Uh, so this one right here, um, this is the output of the file header. Okay. And we'll go into this more detail later, but this is everything that you would find in the file header. So there's a magic number. This tells you what, what it is. Um, you know, the ABI we're going to, so we'll go over this later, but, um, you can see here that it goes the, the size of the program headers or the segment headers and how many there are and then the size of the section headers and the number of sections. So you can see this one, there's actually a lot more sections. 
Um, down here it shows the actual sections. Okay, so these are the sections that got printed out. And the program headers right here. So these are the segment headers, the segments. This is the program headers that describe the segments. So each line here is a different segment. Um, just a bit of trivia we'll go over again later is these two right here are the only ones that get loaded into memory. And then here's an interesting thing. This is the section to segment mapping. So this shows that like segment zero, which corresponds with this segment, contains this uh, particular section. But if you look here, see, this is zero, one, two, three. So three and four are two loaded. So these are the ones that get loaded. So you notice here that segment three and segment four contain these sections, contain these sections right here. Okay, so when the binary gets loaded into memory, the loader itself doesn't care about these sections at all. Okay, it doesn't. It all, all it cares about is this information right here, and then the second one here for the the second load. That's all it cares about. This is only useful really for like debugging and stuff like that. The the sections. So, uh, and that's really most of what's useful for us for right now. There's definitely a lot more information in here. Um, all right, and so then the, um, so then we can just do that dash H, which does the, it only dumps the file header. So this is the, the first part of the output that I showed you. And then dash L is the program headers. Okay, so this shows you the program headers. Um, you know which which is the uh, the mapping of the segments, and then this shows you the mapping of the sections inside the segments, if that's useful. Okay, and then capital S gives us uh, these sections. Okay, so these are all are the sections. Okay, and again, we're going to go into more detail in further in later videos. Uh, but this basically is how you can use readelf to examine the elf files. All right, so that does it for this video. So let's summarize what we talked about in this video. Uh, so first we talked about what an elf file is. Then we talked about the different types of elf files, which are executable, shared object, relocatable, and core dump. Then we we'll give a basic introduction of the structure of the elf file. And then I introduced you to the elf header file, which defines the structure of the elf and then also the utility readelf, which allows you to display information about the file headers and the segments and sections inside the binary. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you next time.